What are we looking for? Dogs. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Bird. We're back on Bird's Eye View with it. Like always, appreciate the love and support. Please continue to like, comment, and subscribe. Stop what you're doing. Smash the like button. Smash the subscribe button. Hop in the comment section. Comment whatever you want. Of course, I'm dropping daily bangers day by day. You know we got news of the day coming out of Colorado. And we're going to jump right into it, dog. So, of course, we back with another recap with this Colorado football program. As always, shout out Well Off Media, Reach the People Media, for providing us this phenomenal footage each and every day. Of course, we're coming off of our dominant senior day performance over the Oklahoma State Cowboys, 52 to nothing. It was the first time we put up 50 plus points this season. It was also our first shutout of the year as well. Obviously, we wanted to send our seniors off on the right note, and we definitely did that without question. Of course, I bring you guys the Keys to Victory video each and every week for this Colorado football program, and I mentioned uh, what are some things that we needed to kind of do to make sure we secured a victory, and we basically checked off all those boxes. Of course, I mentioned about Oklahoma State having the fourth worst 1D grade in the country, according to PFF, and the worst grade in the Big 12. That it was going to be Michael Welch and Dylan Hayden mainly getting the brunt of the carries with I-8 not playing in this ball game. Of course, Michael Welch had 12 carries for 47 yards. He led us in rushing. He also had our long rushing touchdown as well. Um, obviously, third down conversions has been something that I've been kind of harping on uh, pretty much all month, the whole month of November. Obviously, the last three weeks, we were 8 of 31 on third down. So, of course, I wanted to improve those numbers. We were 5 of 12 on third down. 5 is the most we've converted in a game all month in the month of November. So, of course, we'll definitely live with that. Uh, I mentioned that their secondary isn't the best, right? They had the third worst coverage grade in the Big 12. They were giving up 32 points per game, right? Which is second worst in the conference. And of course, I mentioned that there were some opportunities for us to kind of light their secondary up, and we did that. Of course, Shadur, he threw for over 438 yards, five touchdowns. Uh, the two receivers, uh, they were pretty much a non-factor. Um, of course, they had two receivers that both had over 50 catches coming into the game. They both had over 700 yards. They both had at least six touchdowns, but they were basically uh, a non-factor. And um, a kudos to our defense for, for, for taking care of those young men. Um, of course, also, I mentioned that our, our defense needed to have come out with a chip on their shoulder. Um, of course, you know we all know what happened in the Kansas matchup, right? We all know that we didn't get a stop in that game. They didn't punt. They scored every possession. Uh, so I, I wanted our defense to come out with a chip on their shoulder, and they definitely did. Right, getting a shutout victory at home. Um, it's just kudos to our defense, man. Our defense was flying around, making plays, making you know, creating turnovers. Um, of course, um, I also mentioned with our offensive line that we need to protect Shadur. Now, obviously, we gave up six sacks, so right, you would think that we didn't protect him in a sense, but we were only accredited with one sack. Our offensive line was only accredited with one sack. Uh, so, of course, we'll live with that. Also mentioned that our defense needs to fly around, be physical, get to the ball, and make plays. And we definitely did that. Oklahoma State had 147 yards total. They had a under. So when you keep a team under 150 total yards, they turned the ball over four times. We sacked them three times. Their two best weapons on the outside combined for 10 catches, only 52 yards. They only had 77 passing yards all day two interceptions i mean our defense played phenomenal and uh like i said i, I had a feeling it was gonna be a bounce back week for our defense let's jump into these top 10 pff grades for our colorado buffaloes and of course starting at number one here carter stockmeyer 91.5 he had our highest tackle grade highest coverage grade as well he also had the third highest run defensive grade he was targeted seven times and only gave up 17 yards in coverage had four tackles three pbus he also had a forced fumble it was a bounce back week for him as well i know he didn't play his best game against kansas this was a bounce back performance for carter and he was all over the field on saturday kudos to you of course keep rolling travis hunter at corner, 86.9, second highest coverage grade. He was targeted five times, only gave up 15 yards in coverage. He had one tackle, two PBUs, and of course, he also had an interception as well. Hello, Heisman. Let's keep it rolling. Number three, Shadur Sanders, 84.1. He was 34 for 41, 438 yards, five touchdowns. Uh, he continues to do some phenomenal things. I'm going to get into where Shadur ranks in the Big 12 and where he ranks at in the nation as well. If he's not in New York, I'm telling you, dog, it's a crime when you realize where he ranked in the nation in pretty much every category. Let's get rolling. Coming in at number four, LeJonte Wester, 79.2. He had our highest receiving grade. He had 11 targets, caught all 11 for a buck 75, two touchdowns. 
six of his 11 catches were at least for a first down. I mean, LeJounte has been special for us all season. His ability to be able to get open, find space, and once he gets the ball in his hand, I mean, he's lighting it in the bottle. And of course, he was able to eclipse 10 touchdowns on the season, uh, which is a great number for that young man. Uh, coming in at number five here, we got DJ McKinney, 74.5, third highest coverage grade. He was targeted nine times, which was the most out of anybody on our defense. He only gave up 13 yards though one tackle one pbu and he had an interception of course that was a pick six i know it was a great feeling for him going up against his old team of course he transferred in from oklahoma state so it's always a great feeling when you play up against your old team especially when you have a great performance against them coming in here at number six is travis hunter at wide receiver second highest receiving grade he had six catches for first downs as well. He was targeted 14 times. He had 10 catches for 116 yards and three touchdowns. Again, what he's able to do on both sides of the ball is just phenomenal, dog. And we have to definitely appreciate what we're seeing right now because who knows when, if ever, we'll see another player such as Travis Hunter. Let's keep it rolling, dog. Shiloh Sanders, 73.2, fourth highest coverage grade he was targeted three times gave up one catch for six yards he also had four tackles and one fumble recovery as well he was flying around the football field had a big hit right on ollie gordon as well shallow sanders definitely played well let's keep rolling nakai hill green 73 flat highest run d grade at the second highest tackle grade had three tackles two of those tackles were for loss he also had a pbu as well he is just mr consistent i mean he's pretty much been on every top 10 pff list all year uh he's what an amazing get what an amazing pickup uh we were able to get this young man coming in out of the transfer portal uh another one coming out of the transfer portal justin mayer 71.2 had the highest pass blocking grade at 90.0 which is elite he had the highest run blocking grade as well didn't give up a pressure or a hurry great job by that young man there that's my dog man great job by justin mears there especially on senior day capping off his senior day really well chidozi in wonku is going to round out our top 10 68.4 had the fifth highest run grade had the fourth highest pass rushing grade finished with two tackles a half a tackle for loss a half a sack he also had one fumble recovery as well honorable mention here cohen hood dog cohen hood is a baller man he is an absolute baller dog and i can't wait to see him next year with i mean an ample size of opportunities he's gonna come in right and expected to be one of our starters for sure that we roll out there at db i mean cohen hood targeted three times gave up zero catches had two pbus i mean he, he's he's a really talented football player dog kudos to cohen hood man Glad that he's in black and gold and he'll be playing in Boulder, Colorado. Of course, when you look at some of the numbers here, right, that was our final regular season game. We were able to finish the year off nine and three. What a great, great turnaround from one and 11 to four and eight to now nine and three. Of course, going to a bowl game likely is going to be the Alamo Bowl, um, is, which is in San Antonio. Um, likely going to end up playing BYU. It could be BYU or Iowa State, but it'll probably be BYU. Uh, so, of course, we'll see exactly what it transpired, but that's where the predictions are right now. When you look at where we finish statistically as a team and some individuals as well, let's start as a team first, right? Our offense finished averaging 34.5 points per game, which ranked third in the conference. Our 54 team touchdowns ranked second in the conference. Of course, on defense, uh, we gave up on, on average 22 points per game, which ranked sixth in the conference. 32 touchdowns was the fourth fewest given up in the conference. 37 sacks, of course, we led the conference in sacks. Uh, we're 11th in the nation right now in sacks. Our 12 fumble recoveries led the Big 12 Conference. We had 13 forced fumbles, which ended up finishing second. Cincinnati finished first, they have 14. And then we finished with 12 interceptions, which is tied for sixth in the conference. When you look at our individuals, right? When you look at Shadur, 337 completions, which led the Big 12 Conference. He's second in the nation in that category. Completion percentage is 74.2. He led the Big 12 there. He's number one in the country. Passing yards, 3,926. He led the Big 12 there as well. Number three in the nation. 
35 touchdowns, leads the Big 12, number two in the country, 327.2 yards passing per game. That leads the Big 12, that's third in the nation, and passing efficiency, 168.8. That led the Big 12. He's also fifth in the nation there. So when you look at it, I mean, every important passing category, completions, completion percentage, yards, touchdowns, yards per game, and efficiency, Shador Sanders led the conference in every last one of those categories, and he was top five in the nation in those categories. And of course, he led the nation in completion percentage, second in the nation in completions, third in the nation in yards, second in the nation in touchdowns, third in the nation in yards per game, and of course, fifth in the nation in passing efficiency. If that young man is not in New York, I, I, what are we doing, dog? Really, what are we doing? Of course, Travis Hunter, right? 92 catches. He leads the Big 12 in that category, fifth in the nation. His 14 touchdowns also leads the Big 12. He's second in the nation in that category, 1,152 yards. He finished second in the Big 12 conference there behind T-Mac, and he ranks fifth in the country in receiving yards. His 7.7 .7 receptions per game led the Big 12 and is also fifth in the nation. His 96 yards per game was second in the Big 12 and sixth in the nation. Passes defended, which is PBUs and interceptions combined. He finished with 15 of those, which led the Big 12 and is eight nationally. And of course, his 11 PBUs also led the Big 12. So when you look at it with Trav, dog, I mean, leading the Big 12 in offensive categories and defensive categories, being top five in the nation in offensive categories. When you look at, I mean, top 10 in the nation in offensive categories and defensive categories. I mean, what are we sitting here talking about, dog? He is the Heisman Trophy winner. Of course, you got to give some love to LeJonte Wester. He finished with 70 catches, which ranked seventh in the conference, 880 yards, ranked ninth in the conference, and then his 10 touchdowns ranked second in the conference. So obviously that young man definitely made him some money this season. We were all high on LeJonte Wester coming into the season transferring from FAU, especially with what he did you know, last year at FAU. So not surprised that he was able to come in and have a lot of success. Hopefully we can get him to that thousand yard mark. Of course, these numbers are the regular season numbers, right? So we still got a bowl game to play. Obviously the bowl game numbers are gonna be added to these numbers as well too. So our guys' numbers are definitely gonna improve. You know, Trav is likely to have over 1200 yards. You know, LeJonte is about 120 yards away from 1,000, so we could have 2,000-yard receivers, right? Um, it's it's going to be fun to watch our Colorado Buffaloes. Obviously, we got the early national signing day is going to be on Wednesday, the 4th, this Wednesday. Of course, we'll be right here on Bird's Eye View. I'm going to be dropping a ton of commitment videos, a ton of signing videos. Uh, you know, I got, a, I got a special video where I put them all together. It's going to be fun, dog. So not going to keep it long. Just want to bring you guys on the phenomenal update. Please continue to like, comment, and subscribe. You know what time it is, dog. Bird's Eye View, man.